Um, so I'm going to read a little, slightly terrifying because I haven't read anything from it yet, but uh, a little bit from my new novel called Wild Abandon. And um, it's set in a commune in um, West Wales and it's about a family. Well, it's about the commune at large, but also about the family. It's a, a daughter, little brother and mum and dad. And the little boy, uh, Albert, who's 11 years old, is, has been convinced that the world is going to end uh, in 2012 and he's been making all sorts of preparations for that. Um, his mum is quite keen for him to stop believing that the world is going to end and she has been trying to think of ways to get him to see beyond this and one of the things she comes up with is uh, this kind of semi-meditation game where you uh, visualize meeting yourself five years, five year, your, yourself five years older, um, and in the game you um, imagine walking down a corridor and on the like a hotel corridor and on the uh, the room doors is a number and each number corresponds to an age. So if there's a room that has a number ten on it, then your ten year old self is inside and thirty or thirty year old self. So um, she makes her son close his eyes and she says walk down this corridor and he's 11 so he goes past his bedroom and he goes up to uh, number 16. The idea being that if he can meet and speak to his 16 year old self, his 16 year old self will um, show him that all the things that he's currently concerned with are no longer of relevance to him and he's moved on in theory. And um, So it's a conversation inside the 11 year old boy's head between himself and as he imagines he'll be when he's 16. I don't know how I'm going to signify <laughs> both, both people, but maybe I'll just hope that you get it. Albert, yo, I'm 16. I'm 11. How's the next dimension? Insane. I knew it would be. So what happened? Well, it all started with the swarms. Not just one insect, but all of them. Over land and sea to desiccate the earth. You know some words. I was, I was standing on the flat roof when they blocked out the sun. You could hear them. They were making a documentary about me and they got it on camera when I said, fetch the goddamn gasoline. Wow, yes. Then I poured the gasoline through the woods in a circle around the big house. My henchmen all stood at different points along the circle, each with a box of matches. I went up on the flat roof and everyone waited for my signal. I knew that the forest would only burn for so long and we had to time it right so the swarm would pass by before the forest burned out. Makes sense. I could see the mega swarm, com mega swarm coming over the horizon. Locusts, hornets, wasps, horseflies, mantises, midges. And I was like, hold, hold. And I could hear the scrit, scrit, scrit of the super intelligent ant armies approaching, carrying hundreds of times their own weight in weaponry. And still I was like, hold, hold. And behind the ants, the legions of ticks, mites, beetles, rolling their ball bearings, even spiders, although not strictly insects, swinging through the trees behind. And still I yelled, hold, hold, then I said let's watch this city burn which was a signal all of which was on camera of course, and the flames went racing up the trees, shooting into the sky and my team ran back to the safety of the house and we waited and watched as the hordes of ants fried themselves to the floor huge clouds of flaming insects in the air like fireworks in slow motion the smoke acted as a force field directing most of them around us but still a few broke through spiders alight but alive running at us through the undergrowth gnashing their mandibles so we went out in the yard with cans of links and lighters and we went hand to hand with those homos <laughs> who won guess boomtown exactly all in the documentary we oui. you've learned french we oui. <laughs> then what then we were the only people left on the planet. My sister was at her boyfriend's house and then at university, so she was dead. No. Sorry, but yes. Everyone else is fine. Mum and Dad are living together again, and I can do anything I want, like wander around in old libraries and castles and explore hotels. That's pretty cool, but I'm sad about my sister. It was her choice. You'll try to explain to her about how wrong she is, and the world really is going to end, but she won't listen. She's sometimes very insulting. She even tries to kill Mum and Dad by telling them lies about how the world world won't end. You may not want to hear this, but pretty soon you'll have to think of a way to stop her disrupting your vital preparations. 
Doesn't she realise that she is wrong and come back to the community just in time? In a fairy tale, maybe. But this is real life, champ. Thank <laughs> you.